Hello, my name is Jim Berthold, a solution engineer with Flexera and the supplier division. In this video, I will be covering the license activation example provided in the FlexNet Embedded Java XT toolkits. This video is intended for customers who are evaluating Flexera's FlexNet Embedded license technology in conjunction with the FlexNet Operations software monetization platform. I will be covering two of the examples in the toolkit. The first is the capability request example, which can be used for both online and offline license activation. The second is the view example, which displays the license rights on the device. For prerequisites, it is assumed that you have been provided with system administrator access to a FlexNet Operations Cloud Evaluation site that has been properly configured for licensing and that you have already downloaded the appropriate FlexNet Embedded Java XT Toolkit for your development environment from the Flexera Product and License Center. It is also highly recommended to watch the FlexNet Operations Configuration video for use with the FlexNet Embedded XT Kit examples. If you have any questions, please contact your Flexera representative. As a refresher, in the previous video, I covered the FlexNet Operations Cloud Configuration required to run the licensing examples. An entitlement was created for the Acme customer account for an example product that contained one licensed feature called Survey version 1.0. The account was entitled to a quantity of five licenses with a one-year subscription license model. In this example, the license expiration is February 12, 2021. An activation ID was automatically generated that will be used in the license activation process. Now let's take a look at the function of the view example provided in the toolkit. First, it will create what is called trusted storage if it does not yet exist. Trusted storage provides a secure location where encrypted license rights are stored on the target device. Trusted storage and the licenses contained in trusted storage are tied to a device ID. A device ID is a unique identifier for the device that will be licensed. This ID can be a MAC address, a username, an ID of a connected piece of hardware, a unique text string, etc. In the toolkit examples, the device ID is hard-coded to be a simple text string with the numerical contents 1 through 0. If the device ID is not specified, the default behavior in the FlexNet Embedded XT kits is to use the device MAC address. This will be demonstrated later in this video. For further details, please refer to the FlexNet Embedded Getting Started Guides. Next, the view example will display the details of the license rights in Trusted Storage. As you would expect, the contents of Trusted Storage will be empty prior to license activation. Now, let's take a look at the Capability Request example. We'll be using this example to activate or obtain a license from FlexNet Operations in both online and offline scenarios. As with the view example, trusted storage will first be created if it does not already exist. The capability request example will be configured to use the activation ID from the Acme customer entitlement to obtain a license. A capability request will be generated which will contain information such as the activation ID, device ID, and requested quantity. This capability request will be sent over the internet to FlexNet Operations. FlexNet Operations will verify the activation ID and requested quantity are valid. If successful, it will then register the device ID to the Acme customer account and then return a capability response to the device. This capability response will then be processed or placed into trusted storage. The example will then perform a license request for the survey feature from Trusted Storage, followed by a license return back to Trusted Storage. The view example can then again be run after this license activation to view the details of the licenses in Trusted Storage. Now let's take a look at how a license can be activated on a device that does not have an internet connection. In this scenario, the capability request generated by the example will be saved to a file. 
This file will then be transported to an internet connected system where the capability request file can be manually uploaded into the FlexNet Operations customer portal. As with online activation, FlexNet Operations will verify the activation ID and requested quantity are valid. It will then register the device to the Acme customer account and generate a capability response file. This file can then be downloaded and transported back to the disconnected device. The response file is then processed into trusted storage. From this point on, there is no difference between online and offline activation. The example will again perform a license request for the survey feature from Trusted Storage, followed by a license return back to Trusted Storage. The view example can then again be run to view the details of the licenses in Trusted Storage. I'm going to be demonstrating the FlexNet Embedded Java XT SDK on a 64-bit Windows system using Eclipse. First, extract the SDK downloaded from the Flexera Product and License Center. The source code for all examples can be found in the SDK Examples Client Samples Source Flex Examples directory. In order to run the examples, an identity file needs to be downloaded from your FlexNet Operations Evaluation instance and saved to the source code directory listed above. This identity file will be used to authenticate the capability requests and responses between the device to be licensed and FlexNet operations. I will now show how to perform this task. Log in to the FlexNet operations producer portal and select Identities under the Administer FlexNet Embedded menu. Select the Demo Identity. Then select the Java class file in the Download Client Identity section. If an identity does not exist in your FlexNet Operations instance, please contact your FlexAero representative. Save the identity client.java file to your SDK Examples Client Samples Source Flex Examples directory and replace the existing file. I will now demonstrate how to configure and run the View and Capability Request examples. In Eclipse, under the File menu, select New Project, then select Java Project from Existing Ant Build File, followed by Next. Browse to the Java SDK Build Directory, and select the build client samples.xml file followed by open. Then select finish. Before we run the view example, you will first need to copy the FlexCore DLL for your platform to your Eclipse Workspace Java wrapper folder. The FlexCore DLL can be found in the SDK lib directory. Now in the Package Explorer, under Java Wrapper Source Flex Examples, double-click on View.java. This view example can be run without any modifications. However, you may want to modify the default hard-coded device ID, particularly if multiple people will be testing using the same example. As referenced earlier, the default device ID is a string with the numbers 1 through 0. Search for 1234 in the view example to see where the device ID string is specified. You can either modify this to be a string of your choice, or replace it with null to default to the use of your system MAC address, which I will do here. Now we are ready to run the view example. As expected, there are no license features in Trusted Storage as we have not yet activated a license. Before we run the capability request example to perform the license activation, let's log in to the customer-facing FlexNet Operations portal. 
you should have added yourself as a user of the Acme customer account as referenced in the first FlexNet Operations configuration video. On the home page under Recent Entitlements, the activation ID is displayed for the example product that we previously entitled to the Acme customer account. Select List Entitlements under the Activation and Entitlements menu. Here you can see the entitlement details. The activation ID is again displayed along with the entitled and available quantities, which is 5, along with the license expiration. Now select Devices under the Devices menu. No devices are displayed as we have not yet activated any licenses. Now let's configure the Capability Request example to perform an online license activation. In Eclipse, double-click on the CapabilityRequest.java example. We will make the same device ID modifications as we did to the view example. Search for 1234 to see where the device ID string is specified and make the same changes. I will replace the default string with null to again use my MAC address for the device ID. Besides a device ID, devices also have a user-friendly device name that is viewable in the FlexNet Operations Producer and Customer Portals. This is set using LicenseManager.SetHostName. Change the default sample device to a friendly name. I will call it JimB Test Device. The last modification to the capability request example will be to enter the activation ID and desired quantity for the license activation. To do this, search for add rights ID, which is another term for activation ID. Remove the comment from this line and then replace act-test with the activation ID from the FlexNet Operations Entitlement created in the first video. This activation ID is also directly available in the customer portal. We will keep the requested quantity as one. Now let's run the capability request example. You will want to run the example with the dash server argument followed by the activation URL for your evaluation instance. The example ran successfully. Let's take a look at what happened. Initially, there were zero features in trusted storage. The capability request was created and sent to FlexNet Operations, which returned a capability response. The capability response was then processed into trusted storage, which now contains one feature. This is the survey feature that was assigned to the example product. The survey feature version 1.0 was then successfully acquired from trusted storage and later returned to trusted storage. Now let's run the view example to see the contents of trusted storage. It contains the feature survey version 1.0, the license expiration is February 12, 2021, the quantity is 1, it is bound to the system with the MAC address shown, the license start date from the entitlement is February 12, 2020, and was activated today, March 3rd. Lastly, the feature is valid for acquisition. Now let's see the update in the customer portal. The list entitlements view in the customer portal now shows four out of the five licenses are available as one license has been activated. The devices view shows all devices that either currently or previously had licenses. Here you can see the Jim B test device that was just activated. You can select a device to drill down for more details. If desired, the capability to return a license back to FlexNet Operations can be provided should the customer need to move or re-host the license on another system. To do this, change the requested quantity from 1 to 0 and run the capability request example again.
We start with our one survey feature in Trusted Storage. The request for quantity zero returns the license rights back to the entitlement in FlexNet operations, and the acquisition of the feature survey fails as it no longer exists in Trusted Storage. The view example also confirms that there are no licensed features in Trusted Storage. Now let's go back and take a look at the List Entitlements view in the Customer Portal. It now indicates five out of the five licenses are available. Let's now simulate an offline activation from a disconnected device. First, set the desired quantity of licenses back to one. And now run the capability request example with the minus generate option followed by the name of the desired binary capability request file. I will call it jimbcaprequest.bin. Unless otherwise specified, the file will be saved in the workspace Java wrapper folder. This file then needs to be moved to a system that has an internet connection with access to the FlexNet Operations customer portal. On the internet connected system, log into the customer portal and select Offline Device Management from the Devices menu. Select Choose File to navigate to the location of the capability request file, followed by Upload. Select the link to download the capability response file. This file then needs to be transported back to the disconnected target system. Note that this action can also be performed in the producer portal. With the capability response file copied over to the disconnected system, run the capability request example with the minus process option followed by the path to the downloaded capability response file. In this example, I copied the file to the local Java wrapper workspace folder. The capability response file was processed into trusted storage and the acquisition of the survey feature was successful. This concludes the video on running the view and capability request examples using the Flex and Embedded Java XT kit. If you have any questions, please contact your Flexera representative. Thank you.